Hey everybody, and welcome back to the next part of the Match 3 tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and finish up our Match 3 game and then start working on the UI. So the only thing left in the game is that when we make a match, like so, and the board is falling, we can still swap gems, which will cause problems. So to fix this, open up your gem script and we're going to determine, we're going to check to see if the board is in motion and if it is we're just going to say that you can't swap and gem script which is on the on mouse down button so we're going to do this and instead of is swapping, we want to determine board state. And then we just want to return after if the board is active, which is what this function will return if a gem is following or moving. Alright. And now if we play. Uh, Oh, go ahead, state. It's a function. And now, if we play and we make a match, you won't be able to match anymore, which is how we want it. So, now we're going to go ahead and work on the UI. Um, it's going to be a pretty basic UI because uh, we don't have a lot of useful tools that we can use, um, such as like NGUI. It's what I normally use when I make all my UIs, but that's a paid for uh, asset. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the Unity G GUI uh, system. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a game object and call this game. And we're going to drag in our scenery and board into it, and then we're going to prefab it. And now we can go ahead and delete this object. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is create a new empty object and call this our UI. We can position this at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to go ahead and add a GUI text to the scene. Parent it. Uh, we're going to type in the title. It's going to be called match read. Tutorial. We're going to align this center and middle center, and then move this up to 0.9. Change the font size to 24. And now we want to add a script, make a new script, and we're going to call this the UI. Uh, take the UI script and drag it to the UI game object, and then double click it. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to create a button that's going to do something. Um, in Unity, there is a, another special function like update and start. It's called onGUI. And this is run on the GUI. And it allows you to use the GUI function inside of it to create things like a button. And a button takes a rect position, which is a rectangle, and a string text. So we're going to say new rectangle. And right now we're just going to put it at 0, 0, 0, and 120, and 30 for the height and width. And then we're going to put string uh, text called new game. And let's see how this looks. So the button is up in the top corner, which is position 0, 0 from the edge of the button outwards. The width is the 120, and the height is the 30. And so now we want to position this more in the middle of the screen. So to do this, we want to use the screen class, which is our screen, and it has a height and a width. So we want to take the width and divide it by 2 to get the middle, and the height and divide it by 2 to get the middle for the x and y, respectively. And then we want to take half of our width and subtract it for the same reason, since it starts in the top corner. And then doing all that allows the button to be right in the middle of the screen. 
Okay, so the next thing we want is to actually do something when this happens. This is this button is in an if statement, it returns a bool when it's clicked, which is true, otherwise it's false. So we want to make a public game object and we're going to call this game. And then in game we want to create a new game object. Game object. And we're going to instantiate the game, the public game object up above. And then we want to destroy the uh, UI, which is just destroy the game object that's attached to this script. So go back to your prefab folder and drag in the game prefab to the game uh, slot. Click play. Press the new game button. And there you go. Uh, thank you for watching. And I will have another video out in a couple of days.